What's going on? You already see the title. The Phillies get the improbable game one win in the 10th inning off of JT's shot. Absolute shot. To guess who? Mr. Kyle Tucker. Over his hands into the stands. The one that was the go-ahead home run. And we win 6-5 over the Houston Astros. So let's just get into it. So many big moments. So many key things that the Phillies were able to do. And let me know what you guys think. Because early on, we got blitzed. Kyle Tucker... One of the players of the game that they didn't win. He came in and he came in just on fire. Aaron Nola, one of our aces on the mound. We were we were doing okay through the first inning. You know, got out the first inning. And then the second inning, you have Kyle Tucker, homer into right field, 359 feet. First pitch, ball, four-seamer on the, inside, on the outside. Uh, second pitch, took that strike looking on the outside. And then the third pitch, the changeup. Left it elevated a little bit and... He didn't miss. one nothing, Boom. Just like that. And that really set the momentum for the Astros early in that game. And then later in that inning, you had McCormick get on. You had Goriel get on. And then Maldon, uh, Maldonado hit a single to uh, second. And then, boom, brings in two more runs. 3 nothing, Just like that. Before you can even blink your eyes, it's 3 nothing In that house in Houston. You hear that dumbass choo-choo train. In that first inning after that one run jack. And they were all, they were feeling themselves. You know what I mean? And I remember uh, between innings, I don't know if it was when it was 3 nothing or after the bottom of the third. When Tucker again, <laughs> homer to right field. This time 395 feet, scoring Pena and Bregman. And they cut to Dusty Baker. They were having an interview and they were talking about they were sharing a chuckle in the dugout. Maybe it was him and... Tucker or whatnot, and they were probably talking about the home run, da 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 da. And he said, "Okay, it's a good team. We gotta get back to it." Yeah, y'all were laughing then. Yeah, but you wasn't gonna be laughing for long. You had Justin Verlander on the mound, all in six in World Series games, I believe, has not pitched well. Um, has not pitched well at all. In in the in the in the playoffs, well, definitely in the World Series. Right, and he's he's cruising through four. Right, so you go into the fourth inning, and then you have Reese Hoskins starts off the inning, finally gets a hit off of him. Boom, single to you know shallow center, and then Bryce Harper gets a piece of one. Right, he gets a piece of one, takes it into into right field. Now you have Reese Hoskins rounding third base, and there's I think he was on second at that point. And the third pace coach puts up the stop sign. And there was no reason at that point with two outs for him to not send him home. And you can see it on Bryce Harper's face. He gets the first and he's like, oh, why did y'all not send him? And those are the moments. And he mentioned it in the game. Those are the moments that can come back to haunt you. And fortunately for us, one of the heroes of the game, we didn't know he'd be it. But he started the game one heroics early. Mr. Nick Castellanos. Singles to left, bails out the third base coach, and we put one run up. Hoskins comes home, and Harper goes to second. And then immediately, Alec Bohm comes up, doubles the left field, just laces one down the left field line, and brings in Harper and Castellanos. Boom. It's 5-3. So we respond back immediately. And then in the top of the fifth, guess what happens? Schwarber gets on, Marsh gets on. Marsh gets a single, I think. Schwarber gets a walk. And then JT Riamuto doubles, crushes the ball to deep left center. And that was going to be a theme for him in the game as well. Crushes the ball to deep left center. Brings in Schwarber and Marsh. Boom, 5-5. Five, five. You talk about a team that can come back and respond in kind. They've done it time and time again in these playoffs. And this was no different. They didn't know how they were going to respond. Boom, the whole world, the whole U.S. at least, it was on display for everybody to see. The Phillies are no joke. Bats are still hot. Okay? Temperature check, still steaming. Okay? 5-5 five, five after the fifth inning. And then from there, it was just really beautiful how Rob Thompson managed this game. Okay? Because you got you roughed up Verlander, you roughed up Nola, and then it became a 0-0 game again. And now you're talking about the strength of that Astros team, which is their bullpen. Well, another strength of that team. Versus... Uh, a part of the Phillies team that's been pretty shaky this year, right? 
But as of late, they've been playing better. So you go down that stretch, right, from the 5th all the way on to the 10th inning. And you look at how Rob Thompson managed this, okay, right? So you brought in Jose Alvarado to face uh, left, right, left, right? Jordan Alvarez, Alex Bregman, Kyle Tucker with one out in the fifth inning, and he gets rid of all three of them. Get out of here, right? Then you have Zach Eflin come in with one out in the sixth. He faced the bottom of the lineup, got four outs, and pitched around the, the infield single on the walk, and got out that inning. Then you bring in Ranger Suarez, who's probably going to be the starter for game three. He entered with two outs in the seventh to face Alvarez, Bregman, and Tucker. Again, you know, the heart of that lineup, you know, big bats. And he got the first two out, and he allowed a single to Tucker. And then Sir Anthony comes in, the best reliever all year, to play Suarez with one out in the eighth. And then, you know, he's tight roping every pitch in that inning. He's tight roping every, tip, every pitch. And then Dominguez got five outs, okay? You go with your best guy, you get five, out, five outs, boom. You get out of a tough spot there, okay? And then David Robinson, <clears throat> the best guy you got left on that bench, you bring him in in the tenth inning, following JT Real Muto's shot to right field, and then he's able to close the game out for you. And he was a little wild at the end. Let's not let's not forget that. But he got it done, okay. But the big hit later in that game, JT Real Muto. And we're going to go through the pitch sequence here. You get pitch one, ball cutter, um, low 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 in uh, in uh, low in the middle. Second strike, looking, four-seamer, 97 miles an hour. Um, you know, up in his zone. Uh, third pitch, cutter, right in the middle, strike swinging. Swings right through it. Fourth pitch, discipline, cutter, off the off the plate, discipline, doesn't swing. Fifth pitch, cutter, low. Again, discipline, does not swing. And then with the full count, four-seamer on the outside of the plate, Takes it to right field. And JT, after the game, their interview on him, he said, I just hope he doesn't catch it. He thought he got a good piece. I just hope and pray he doesn't catch it. And you saw Kyle Tucker jump up. Ball went over his glove, out of his reach, boom. And you could just hear a pin drop in that stadium. It, it took all the air out of that Astro Stadium. And they threw the ball back. They was pissed, bro. And I was listening to that on ESPN Radio as I was getting back into the city. And boy, listen. Philly was litty. They was litty when they saw that, bro. And that you talk about I told I, I talked about in the last in the last video, JT Real Muto, he's been heating up from the NLDS onward, especially through the NLCS. He's been heating up and that bat is red hot. Had a big hit earlier in the game to bring in two runs and then had the game winning home run in the tenth inning. So I just loved how Rob Thompson managed the game. And he did it in a way that you didn't destroy your bullpen for game two and moving forward in this game. Because you let's look at the pitch counts here for, for the bullpen. Yeah, so you had Aaron Nola, 81 pitches, 52 strikes. Then you had Alvarado, seven pitches. Didn't really take that much out of him. Zach Eflin, who's really your long reliever slash closer, right? They've used him in multiple different capacities in the bullpen, 20 pitches, 11 strikes. Very good, right? Didn't wear him out. Ranger Suarez, who's going to be your game three starter. He only threw 11 pitches, so he's going to be available, not just in the bullpen, but for that game three start. He's going with all three days rest, and he really didn't throw that much. Then you had Sir Anthony, 24 pitches, and then you had Dave Robinson, 25 pitches. So maybe you might have to keep an eye on Sir Anthony, see how he's feeling, but you still have, excuse me, Alvarado and I would say Eflin to be able to throw pretty much at full strength because like I said Eflin is he's he's a former starter so he has that that stamina to be able to be able to come out and I think get it done again so just great job overall bat stayed hot clutch got big hits and big moments and Rob Thompson really managed that game like a veteran like a like a manager that's been in uh been a skipper for years right versus dusty baker on the other side so it's a really good matchup he he just he has ice water in his veins and he doesn't seem phased by anything now one of the bigger moments in this game because we we also we might not have gotten to that big red mutual hit 
if it wasn't for Nick Castellanos digging in to his soul, his essence, and then making one of the plays of the game a sliding catch against Pena. He, he, Pena had a blue pit to right field. Nine times out of ten, that drops in, and the Astros score a run. Game over. Game over. But somehow Castellanos comes in, makes a sliding catch, and we get out of that inning, and you set it up for Red Muto to be able to put us over the hump, man. And then <laughs> you're going to see the picture on the screen right now. He makes the catch, and then he runs off the field. He pulls up his shirt as to mimic and mock them over the, the wire controversy. So back in 2019, okay, and, and you're going to see this pop up on the screen. There was an account that talked about the, the um, Jose Altuve Tuve possibly wearing a wire where he would be getting buzzed in uh, from the hallway guy back from the video scandal. So this is back in 2017, 18, 19, I guess, where they had a guy in the hallway, a video guy in the hallway that was taking pictures of the opposing team signs and allegedly apparently Jose Altuve and possibly others had a wire on their right shoulders where they would get, be getting buzzed in I guess to be getting signs on what pitch was coming right so that that was a big scandal MLB they came out they said they explored the wearable devices during the investigation and they found no evidence to substantiate it okay but that's been something that's been following them so for <laughs> Nick Castellanos so you know he's the person to, to wear his emotions on his sleeves makes the one of the catches of his life one of the worst graded outfielders filters this year in baseball one of the worst graded outfielders maybe the worst graded outfielder comes out, makes that type of catch, and then lifts his shirt up as to say, I'm not wearing a wire. I did that all on my own. It just shows you <laughs> how much teams around the league, including us and fans around the league, still hate the Astros for everything that happened with that cheating scandal. And here's a little chart, a little interactive chart, you know, something a little fun for you guys here that talks about the rooting interest for people around the country. And as you can see, <laughs> I think at least 80 to 88% of the country is rooting for the Phillies. And then you have that small section around in and around Texas that is rooting for the Astros. Now, this is courtesy of Bet Online. So, 2022 World Series rooting interest based on geotag Twitter data and fan hashtag. So, yo, we ain't forget, homie. We ain't forget. And you need to not forget that we just won game one in your house. We needed to take at least one game in Houston. Now, may, I don't know what happens in game two. Maybe we win, maybe we lose. But we needed to take one, steal one game down there in the heart of Texas so we could come back home to Philly with really good momentum. All right, so let me know what you guys think about that. Um, like the video, subscribe, leave your comments and your thoughts below. Make sure you click the notification bell. And now I want to go ahead and get into game two, the starters, um, what the lineups are going to be and what I think is going to happen here. So you look at the lineup for the Phillies, Kyle Schwarber, Reese Hoskins in the two spot, JT in the three spot, Harper Benton in the cleanup spot, Nick Castellanos at five, Nick Bohm at six, Bryson Stott seventh, Gene Segura or Mr. Clutch Gene at eight, and then <clears throat> Marsh at ninth. And then you look at Houston's lineup, Jose Atuve batting one in the leadoff spot, Followed by Jose um, uh, Pena, uh, Jeremy Pena in the two spot, Jordan Alvarez at three, Bregman in the cleanup spot at four, Kyle Tucker, who we have to watch out for, obviously now he's made his name known, uh, Guriel at six, Mancini at seventh, uh, McCormick at eighth, and Maldonado at ninth at catcher. And then facing off on the mound for us would be Zach Wheeler. Going against Framber Valdez. So very, very good matchup. This is a critical game here. And I like how we're, we're able to have our best against one of their best. Because one of their, their strengths is their pitching and their bullpen. Obviously, we, they can hit. We've seen that in game one. And we snapped their undefeated streak. They were 7-0 until they just got this loss in game one. But as you saw in game one, they can hit, right? Courtesy of Mr. Tucker and some of the others, especially Pena, who is one of the best rookies we've seen in a while. 
He's playing as if he's a grizzled veter veteran already. But you look at this matchup with Framber Valdez. Pitched very well this year, 17-6 with a 2.82 ERA, 194 strikeouts. And his whip was 1.16, not too shabby at all. And you look at how he's pitching these playoffs, he's been very, very good. So in the ALDS, one start, five and, a, five and two thirds innings, gave up two earned runs versus the Mariners. Uh, pretty, very good game, very good game. And then you look at um, his game in the ALCS versus the Yankees, seven innings, no earned runs, only four hits. So he's really been on fire in these playoffs. Really, really pitched well. And look, it's going to be tough. They're going to have to be patient. He he's very efficient, and he's he's almost as good as Verlander. I mean, obviously Verlander did not have a good game one, but Verlander is still a great pitcher. I mean, at thirty nine, he's only expected to throw five, maybe six innings, so he's able to crank it up to like ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven, with some nasty all speed pitching. And Fran Valdez, you're not going to have a, much of a drop off from him. So that's you know you got your your lefty in Valdez. So we'll, we'll we'll see. We gotta stay we gotta stay aggressive, yet, um, consistently patient. G choosing good pitches to hit, not not swing at things in the dirt. Making him throw strikes. Okay, you gotta make him throw strikes and get your pitch to hit. Don't be sloppy. You gotta make him throw pitches early. Make him work so you can get him out of there as soon as you can and get to that bullpen again. All right. Contrary to proper popular belief, I want to get to that bullpen again and start to really wear them down over the course of the series so they come back to Philly not being at full strength. It's almost like a boxer. You got a guy who's you got a guy who's uh, really fast as your opponent, a guy with good feet. You know what you want to do? You want to set up your jab, but you also want to go to the body, take his legs away. And that's what the Phillies need to do with this Astros bullpen. Go to the body, take their arms away. OK, you want to wear them out early so that it shows up later in this series. All right. And then opposing him is going to be Zach Wheeler. Again, phenomenal year. And <clears throat> Zach Wheeler has been really great in these playoffs. He's been a guy we can lean on. You know, this year he was 12 and 7. Again, same as Valdez, 2.82 ERAs. So they're the same there. He had 163 strikeouts and an even better whip at 1.04. And in these playoffs, he's been lights out on fire. In the wild card game versus uh, St. Louis, and I made a video about this. St. Louis did not have did not hit well against him, and career wise, none of those guys hit well against Wheeler, and it showed. Shut down Goldschmidt, shut down Pujols, shut down that whole squad. He went six and a third, only two hits, uh, no earned runs, four strikeouts. Boom, shut them down. And Ods. Versus the Braves. Six innings. Gave up three earned runs. Solid. Not great, but solid. And we ended up getting the win. And then, San Diego Padres. One game. Uh, two games, excuse me. 13 innings pitched across those two games. Got one win. Only gave up two two earned runs in 13 innings. with 1.38 ERA. An average of eight strikeouts per game. Fire. Fire. When you needed him to be at his best... Against that hot Padres team, he not only pitched well, no, he pitched great. Shut their asses down, bro. And now in this World Series, you have him facing off in a very pivotal game, too. Because you look at the the stats for a World Series, um, the winner of game one, I believe, has gone on to win, what is it, like 80% of the time? All time? So, no, 64% of the time. So historically, teams that win game one of a best of seven series have gone to win the series 64% of the time. However, the game one winner has won each of the last four World Series and 16 of the last 19 World Series. So in recent memory, the winner of game one has a very high percentage. So, that, so that's what I was thinking about, 16 of 19, which is a very high percentage. So the last 19 World Series... um. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. 84% of the Game 1 winners have gone on to take the entire series. So, put ourselves in a very good spot, stealing one game at home. Now, me personally, I think that the Astros 
are going to find a way to win game two. I think they're going to bounce back. They're a very resilient squad. They're a very proud squad. They have a very good skipper in Dusty Baker. They have really great pitching, like I said, in Valdez, which is going to match up well against Wheeler. I think that's a wash. It's going to be a rubber match, right? But I think that they'll be able to find a way to bounce back and get this game. Now, if we can win this game and go up 2-0, all bets are off, okay? But I just think it will be 1-1 one one going back to Philly. Just my personal opinion. Just from what I saw from game one, they played very well. They just collapsed, really. There's, and look, that's going to be something that follows around Verlander. He's, he's one of the few pitchers that has pitched in the World Series in three different decades. Yet he struggled in each of those three decades in all of his appearances. He has an all-time ERA of 6.07 in his World Series starts, which is the worst in MLB history, I believe. So I think that is something you have to take into account going into game two, that they're not necessarily going to collapse the way they did with Verlander's history. I think Valdez is going to stabilize them, and they're going to bounce back. So let me know what you guys think, but excellent job by the Phillies in game one. I was walking down... Uh, Broad Street last night and you could just see everybody glued to the television screens you know there'd be a club here a club there a bar here and people were just glued to the screens hell people just stopped just stopped dancing and were looking at the game people were outside looking through the windows checking out the score especially when we were getting into the eighth or ninth inning and then when JT hit that that home run you could just hear screaming throughout the streets and then when they when they won it boom Wall Street was lit. So, yo, go Phils. You know, get ready for game two. Go out and get the job done. Hopefully, you can prove me wrong in this game two. Um, I believe it's 7 o'clock tonight. Be glued to your TV and we're going to talk about it. Um, so next time, y'all. Peace.